So in my last video, I showed you how I made some weighted mallets. In this video, I want to show you how I made an extra heavy mallet. This weighs in at two pounds, five ounces, and um, is pretty much solid Purple Heart. And um, it really works fantastic. So let me show you how I got the extra weight in this. shoulder for the handle first. This way, if it ends up a little bit thinner or thicker than I wanted it to be, I just have to assure that I plane down the center piece of the mallet to that exact same thickness. More details for this step can be found on my first video. Then you just simply cut two lines if you want, two edges or just one, and then drill holes at the bottom to assure that your handle does not split. For the head, I'm going to rip all pieces down to two and seven eight inches, and then I'm going to head over to the miter saw, and at the miter saw, I'm going to cut all of the center pieces with a two degree angle, so I'll end up with a little V on the inside of the mallet, so when we drop those wedges in um, from the top, we're going to end up with a nice sturdy mallet. For this extra heavy mallet, I'm, instead of drilling holes like I did in the first video, I'm actually going to cut out the entire center, kind of like you would a bandsaw box. So I'm trying to get as much material as I feel that I can safely get out of there with not affecting the integrity of the mallet. I'm marking out spots where I want to remove a little bit more material from both of the sides of the mallet as well. And this is going to allow me to fill those with BBs and epoxy and get even more weight into the head of this mallet. I'm using a 1 and 3 8 bit and I'm going approximately 3 8 of an inch deep. I'm taping off my entry and exit point from the bandsaw so that when I fill this with epoxy, none of that epoxy leaks into the center where the handle is going to be of the mallet. I'm using a two part epoxy mix here and I'm just going to fill these with epoxy as well as BBs. Um, and I just want to make sure that I really get all of the air space out um, so that I get that extra weight of the epoxy in addition to the BBs. Applying a couple strips of veneer here was kind of a last minute decision and I'm really happy that I did because the fine little pinstripes make for an awesome looking mallet and it also made it a little bit easier for assembling it so instead of needing to wait for that epoxy to completely dry so that I'd be able to flip you know one on top of the other um, I was able to just clamp these well enough to get that um, glue dry enough and I was able to continue with my assembly. In my previous video, you'll notice that at this point I applied a couple of nails to hold this in place. With Purple Heart, you definitely don't want to do that. And we have a lot thinner edges since we used the bandsaw to cut this out. Purple Heart will split really easily because it's so dense. It's kind of like if you, you know, hit a rock just right, it's going to split as opposed to other woods that, you know, would dent and, and move and allow that nail to just pass freely through. So I let the glue sit long enough that I feel that these pieces are not going to move at this point. And then I apply epoxy and a lot of BBs and I'm going to try to get this packed as tight as I can, not only for the weight, but because I want to make sure that it's really solid. Since we did cut away a lot of that um, purple heart, I want to make sure that when I'm hitting something, there's no air behind that little bit of purple heart that could eventually cause the mallet to fail. So I want it to be completely solid in the middle of this mallet and put a little bit of glue around here. And then when I pick up that piece to put it on top, I notice just how awesome the weight of even just the edge pieces with those added BBs is. Because Purple Heart's so heavy to start with. So, you know, at this point, I'm pretty confident that I'm gonna end up with a really rock solid, heavy feeling mallet. And then obviously you just wanna clamp it up at this point. Table saw makes it really easy to make sure that I get all the edges, you know, nice and flush. I have my miter saw set at two and a half degrees here, and it's really important that you clamp this piece down nice and solid, and that you apply a stick from the top holding this down so your hands are nowhere near the blade, because this is, you know, a pretty thick piece that you're gonna be cutting through, and obviously Purple Heart's pretty dense. 
You also definitely want to make sure that you are cutting the correct side of this. So for the way that I have the blade angled, I need to make sure that the smaller part of the V is facing away from me. And then you're going to flip it, you know, and, and cut the other side. I'm just rounding over all of the edges here. I wipe these down with acetone and then put them out in the sun to allow that purple color to really start to pop. I'm working on restoring this bench vise as we speak because I realized making all of these mallets that this was a very critical part of my shop that I was lacking in. So um, that will be remedied. But anyway, this is gonna work to get this put together. I made the wedges by just grinding them down at the disc sander. And I'm using one of my mallets to um, get these in place. Even though I haven't completely finished my purple heart, heart mallet, I couldn't help myself from trying it up. So on this next mallet, I decided to use the heavy mallet and it just worked awesome. This mallet feels amazing. The weight is absolutely perfect for me. Um, and the veneer, I just love. I think it just added something a little bit extra than just the solid purple heart that I was planning on. So I couldn't be happier. I hope that you've enjoyed this video too. If you did, please like and subscribe. I always appreciate it. And I hope that you have some fun building something.